Welcome back. Thank you for joining us on A Woman in Islam on Ramadan TV. Today we're talking to Hina Ajmal, who is based in the United Arab Emirates. And Hina is sharing with us information about how her life adjusted from being a modern woman into now uh, someone who learned more about tafsir, who learned about um, uh, the Quran. And she's now a, an educator in Quran, and she's also still a student of Quran. We were talking about the five pillars of Islam and and how we need to inculcate it into our daily, daily, daily lives, inshallah, in our diaries, um, on a daily basis. Hina, you were talking about um, the first pillar of uh, is Islam, and can we go to the next pillar? Yeah, sure. So the next pillars, if um, I would like to readjust the order, although uh, if we talk about the order, I think prayer comes next. Uh, that is the difference between a believer and a non-believer. But I'd like to come to it at the end for a certain reason I'll explain later. But let's talk about uh, fasting. Uh, we are in the month of Ramadan. And fasting, there are obligatory fasts which we have to um, perform in the month of Ramadan. And there are also um, nawafil, like uh, the voluntary fasts that we do outside the month of Ramadan. So, you know, when I started learning about Islam, the first shock that I got was that a woman, if she has missed any of her previous fasts, she has to make up for them. And I am coming to get to know about this when I am 26 years old, and there have been lots of missed fasts in the mm -hmm. previous years. And I am sitting and thinking, how am I going to make up for them? Because when I sat and I made total, it was like, you know, I... Um, missed many uh, due to the natural cycle of women. And I missed many due to pregnancies. So there were <laughs> about a total of 200 fasts, which I had to make up. But I knew if I have to go back to Allah and answer in front of him, I should be able to answer about the five basic pillars of Islam, right? At least, at least. So I decided to make up for the missed fasts. And it was a lifestyle change in itself. You know, um, when you have to make up so many fasts, you get into the habit of fasting. And it changed my eating routine. And I had no idea how much the food influences our life. Uh, the time on which you eat, the things you eat, how much you eat. And you'd be surprised. And I, I don't know how many people know, but there's a hadith of a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that there is not a vessel worse than the vessel of uh, uh, the son of Adam, which he fills with food. And if he were to eat, he should fill it one third with food, one third with water and leave one third for air. But <laughs> imagine you fasting, and this is the month of Ramadan, hmm. and we all experience extreme hunger every uh, Maghrib time. And, hmm. you know, when the table is all set for iftar, you're not thinking about that one third you're going to leave for air. You want to hmm. fill that with <laughs> water and food to the brim. Hmm. You know, one third is just a few bites. And that is all a human body requires for survival. Anything that we eat more than that is maybe for the pleasure of the tongue or the pleasure of the desires, uh, which, which we should enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, you know, we cross that boundary, especially being housewives, because we are responsible for mm. cooking and feeding ourselves and yeah. our family. So sometimes I feel that we give uh, cooking more time than is uh, due to it or more time than what will bring us benefit. So the purpose of food is survival, right? Uh, it is nice to use it for uh, luxury sometimes, but if your whole day is spent cooking, 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 and then eating, eating, and eating, so you know what happens? You become very drowsy. And you must have experienced that many of us, when we finish our iftar, we are so drowsy, we don't, have an, we don't even have the energy to go for tarawih. Mm. We're so full. So true, true. Why, why, uh, why do we have to cook so much if you're not eating so much? So, you know, it all starts from uh, the more demand there is, the more supply there has to be. So uh, I have decided to train my children from very young age. I do not... Um, 
um, uh, like uh, obsess about cooking and feeding them all the time because I know that my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that a few bites are enough. They are enough. So, uh, you know, we, we, especially moms, we feel guilty when we don't stuff our children and if they're not gaining weight. And, you know, I am a doctor of pharmacy. So that gives me a little bit right to talk about the human body a bit. And um, the human body is only going to use what is required by it. And the rest, it's only going to store as fat. So, you know, Muslim, a Muslim woman hmm. is not supposed to have a bulging tummy. She is supposed <laughs> to be smart. Yes. Not just yes. mentally, but also physically. So she can perform her ibadah better. Yeah. So she can please her rub better. And it all comes from a physically uh, active body. And that all starts from reducing your food intake. And, you know, this is what the making up of the 200 fasts did for me. I'm so glad. And, you know, Allah in Quran says that um, if, if someone is traveling or he's sick, he can leave the fast and he can make them later. And if someone cannot make them up, they can give fidya. There's a compensation for that. But in the end, he says, Wa lakum. But if you fasted, it is better for you. In kuntum talamu, only if you knew. So you know when Allah gives that <laughs> choice, you don't want to, you wonder, oh my God, if Allah is saying that fasting is better for you and who would know better than him? He's saying, yeah. if only you knew, then you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. So I had already given the fidya for the 200 fasts, but I still made an effort. And few years ago, I completed them. You know, it's all about putting it in your plan. And inshallah, with the help of Allah, you would be able to make up for the fasts. And I recommend all the ladies who are watching, make a table. If you have any missed fasts, make a table jot them down and make an intention at least to complete them and Allah will help you inshallah. Amen, so amen. that was a major lifestyle change when the food choices changed in my life. So and inshallah, then, we can use this time of um, Ramadan to, to help us change our eating lifestyles so that we are much more easier to uh, carry ourselves and, and not so full and have big bellies. So inshallah, that will help us in this way, don't you think? Yes. And Femida, you know what? We have this um, concept that if we will eat very little in the suhoor, we'll feel hungry. Although practically it's totally opposite. The more yes. you'll feel, the more you'll bo your body will be working to digest it. And when you take a short nap in the morning and when you wake up, you'll feel heaviness in your chest. Contrary to that, just try, just try having a very light suhoor and you will feel so fresh the whole of your day. It's a miracle. Really, it's a <laughs> miracle. And you have to experience it. And for that, you have to believe in the words of your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that a few bites are actually enough. So let's let's go to the next uh, pillar of Islam, Correct. which changed my uh, lifestyle. And that was paying zakat. And, you know, uh, when we get married, um, I don't know about other women who are watching me, but in my culture, we are given a lot of gold as gift on our jewelry. And, um, you know, there is zakah that you have to pay on the gold. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that my it's my husband's responsibility <laughs> to pay for that zakah. <laughs> but if anyone has an eye on my gold, I can, you know, uh, fight for it. Don't even think about selling my gold because that's my goal. But the thing is, with power comes responsibility. If that is my gold, then I have to pay the zakat for it. And uh, due to my husband losing his job and there was a time when uh, we were not very financially secure. So he, poor guy, did not have the money to pay for my zakat. And that does not wave zakat off me. I have a whole pile of gold and I have to pay zakat on it. So a woman, if she doesn't have money to pay for her zakat, she needs to sell some of that gold and pay for that zakat. But, you know, we are so emotionally attached to our jewelry and to the gold. We don't want to part with it. So uh, I have sold some of the gold to pay for my zakat. And that was an experience in itself, like letting go of the worldly things that that brings 
Yeah, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so we were talking about the three pillars and giving out uh, zakat and the goal that we have. So we're going to get to the next pillar of Islam. Let's let's look at that one before um, we, we we take a next break. Sure, sure. So you know the next pillar, which is Hajj, um, is kind of related to zakat. So you know a woman is not supposed to is not obligated to go for Hajj until she can afford it. Right. So just like I was saying, I have to pay zakat for my gold and I have to earn for my hajj money if I'm really wanting to go for it. So, you know, it, uh, and I do want to go for hajj. So I wanted to earn money of my own because it's no one's responsibility. It's not obligatory on anyone to pay for my zakat and pay for my hajj. So it asked for me to upgrade my life and become a person who can contribute to the society and in, in the process also earn some halal money. So that uh, gave me an idea to start my own business of prayer dresses. And you know, every Muslim, Muslim, she is supposed to live a life of uh, contribution and that gives happiness, that brings pure happiness to your life. But if your, you know, if your goal is not to go for Hajj, like this is right now the biggest motivation for me. Uh, to to contribute. I made an intention that I want to earn money from it so I can go to Hajj. So, you know, you can make an intention for every action that you do in this life to please Allah. And you can live a very fulfilled life. Hmm. So, talking about the last pillar, yes. um, prayer. Uh, and that is very, very important because, you know, Definitely. you don't have to Pay zakat if you're not uh, earning a certain amount of money. You don't have to go for hajj if you don't have the means to go uh, for hajj. Uh, you, But fasting is one of the pillars which is obligatory upon you in any circumstance. Like there is no way you can skip it. If you're sick, you still have to pray. If you're traveling, you can shorten the prayer. You still have to pray. If you can't stand up, sit down and pray. If you can't sit down, lie on your side and pray. Even if you are in the middle of war, you can pray while fighting. If you are traveling and you have fear of being attacked by an enemy, you can you can pray while riding on that vehicle. So you see, if if someone is uh, obligated to pray while in the being in the middle of the war, then what do you think is the obligation while in the middle of a shopping mall? <laughs> in middle of a party, in middle of a wedding. So there is no question of leaving the prayer. So, mm -hmm. you know, my, my transformation started when I started being mindful of my prayer. And I, I realized that there's no way I can leave the prayer. And if we, so, when we're talking about prayer, um, Hina, um, tell me in terms of your um, your, your lifestyle as, as a mother, as an entrepreneur, how do you find that prayer has made a difference in your life? Oh, Femida, it has made all the difference. So, you know, um, every woman has a different prayer that she is finding difficult to catch up. For example, uh, one woman might find Isha prayer very difficult because she has children who are very young. Uh, maybe she's having trouble uh, praying the Fajr prayer because her baby keeps her awake all night. Maybe one woman is um, in a corporate world and she doesn't get time for hmm. Zohar because she's so busy at that time. Someone might be, uh, you know, an entrepreneur who is finding Asr time very difficult because that's her peak business time. And, you know, every, uh, every woman, depending on her lifestyle, is going to find one of the prayers very difficult. But what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to pray five times a day, no matter what your circumstances are. So for me, my biggest uh, problem was the Fajr prayer and um, I wanted to fix it. And, and it, is, it is unique to every woman who's listening to me. You have to think, what prayer are you having a problem with? And that mm -hmm. if you are able to solve that problem, it's going to solve every problem in your life, ladies, yeah. I'm telling sure, you. Sure. So, you know, the, uh, I started asking myself, why? Why am I missing the Fajr prayer? So the answer was that I was sleeping very late. Why are you sleeping very late? Because I'm addicted to my social media. Why mm -hmm. are you addicted to your social media? So, you know, if you start asking yourself why, 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 you will get to the cause. 
And then in the end, you have to ask yourself, what is important? Is this reading this post or watching this social media video more important or your Fajr Salah? When you know that if you want sleep on time, you cannot wake up on time and what is causing that delay and is Allah more important to you or that thing, then you have to make choice. On hourly basis, I would say you have to make choice. For a woman who's missing her asar because um, she has a very peak business time, mm. she has to ask us, is this money which is coming from a client more important to me or Allah? So uh, true, Allah true, very, very true, uh, Sister Ina, in terms of us um, learning to, to balance and find out what's important. Um, is, is having a social life important? Is that extra sleep more important? Or um, is that uh, time to, 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 to maybe catch up on a series more important uh, after Ramadan? Uh, so it, it's very important that we as women need to self-reflect, look at what we're doing, um, how we plan our days, and find out, you know, how, how to do the balancing act of, um, you know, with, with fasting, with Ramadan, with prayer time. So, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for your time, uh, Sister Hina. Uh, you have been such a great um, a motivational speaker towards me and to our viewers out there. I'm sure, I mean, I've already learned a lot. I'm going to, inshallah, jot down how many uh, fasts I have uh, missed um, throughout my life. And inshallah, I hope, inshallah, our viewers uh, can also, our women out there, and... Um, even men out there can can sit back and, and, and sit and reflect and see how many fasts we have uh, missed and try and inshallah try and you know make up for those days uh, as uh, even after you know after Ramadan it's very important for us to self reflect and change our lives inshallah for a better. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much, uh, Sister Hina, and thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Inshallah, we will see you soon with more women that we are going to be speaking to about women and in their time during. Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum and thank you for joining us.